Sir, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, you have been in Creda for a long time and probably you have been in uh, Madhya Pradesh also. Now shifting to uh, Haryana, how do you feel that the success story that you had at Creda, you can repeat it here at Haryana? I think uh, the rooftops are the highest in Chhattisgarh. The, they have got more than 200 megawatts of rooftop. How would you repeat the success story here? See, it's uh, completely uh, different altogether, you can say, because in Chhattisgarh, almost 44% area is forest. Uh, and here in Haryana, there is no forest. It's hardly 1%. And then the villages are, uh, there, there are more than, when we started Kreda, I think uh, number of villages unliquified in Chhattisgarh were more than 5,000. And number of uh, Majra Dola, the, we, we call it uh, hamlets, unliquified were more than 10,000. And because of some Supreme Court rulings, you cannot lay the conventional lines in century area or national park areas. You people will surprise to know that in a small state like Chhattisgarh, there are 11 forest centuries and 3 national parks. In most of the unliquified villages are either in century or in the vicinity of this uh, national park. So they were not able to supply the conventional lines. So we had to work hard for supplying electricity, though it was power supply state since beginning. In Haryana, uh, the potential is quite high. People have the money, people want to spend money and the power is also very expensive. It is almost available at uh, 8 rupees to 9 rupees per unit. So if you have set up the power plant on the rooftop without subsidy, even without subsidy, as you know that people are ready to sign the PPA at rupees 3 per unit. So it means if you have uh, your own plant on the rooftop, definitely you get the cheaper power. So here uh, the benefit is more than Chhattisgarh. Well, uh, Hatak Singh ji, I would like to ask you two questions. First is, so uh, land in Punjab and Haryana is probably, the more land is very extremely expensive here. Probably it's uh, more than a crore an acre, even in remote areas, even in remote areas. And all the entire land is fertile. Uh, so there is a potential of close to 5,000 megawatts, very close up to you if you go to Ladakh area. And probably Ladakh has the highest solar radiation in the country. How is it possible? I can, I, I, this question can be addressed to all the panelists. How can you bring the power from Ladakh to Punjab, to Haryana, to, Ch to Chandigarh? And what policy initiatives are to be taken at the government level, at the state level, so that this power can be brought here? Because there is practically no demand in Ladakh. But generation is very high. The potential is above 5000 megawatts length. So, what do you feel should be done so that this power can be brought? Before before I put it on to Benzo, let me also add on to one of the points here. Punjab being one of the most fertile, you know, area where they have most of the area is the land base, but they were highly successful in coming up with a model which was very pro-farmer and which was a national issue that was coming out with the policy of a lease. This was the first stage which gave the ownership state to the farmers that they are they are not supposed they can they may not sell out their land maintain the ownership of the land and give it to the lease to the IP players this changed the whole phenomena of the land issue which was primarily major issues in most of part of the country including Punjab primarily so that was one of the first part that despite of being a fertile area or having maximum the lease part gave a lot of comfort to the farmers of leasing out their land with a 25 years or 30 years of lease and letting the robbers come in and put up their power plants. That was one part. Yes, of course, I would like Mr. Benz you know, to come forward because this is a huge potential that I can coming and bring it. I would want if you can take the lease then the add on. You know, as far as the dark is concerned, I think it has tremendous potential for generation. My sense is that they should supply to Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir has a power shortage of 15%. Punjab is power surplus. So I think it would be a good um, arrangement, generation in Ladakh and consumption in Jammu and Kashmir state itself. That, that's one. 
Secondly, um, uh, as Mr. Hartik Singh has mentioned, lease of land for long term, 25 years, has been seen by the farmers as a very lucrative uh, you know, arrangement. <coughs> There's a steady flow of income. Lease rentals are a little more than what return they can get out of paddy and rice. So I think that the model has worked very well. I think the next big challenge and the next big revolution would be in the rooftop. To my mind, it's, a, it's, a, it's another win-win situation because the consumption is happening in that household where the rooftop exists. You are saving straight away, if you go by Punjab standards, 14.5% transmission and distribution losses. So I think this is the big challenge that we have to address, how to make this more commercially viable. An idea which comes to mind is that if somebody was to take up maybe a sector, let us say in Chandigarh or one whole city, then he can aggregate you know, the rooftops, he can arrange for the loans, he can get the panels, he can install them for each household. They can't do this exercise being very you know, um, uh, largely distributed and quite a segregated you know, affair, but an aggregator can and he can get economies of scale. I think it will add to the power availability of the state wherever you know aggregation can be done successfully. I understand this is done in the USA, but I'd like to study more and also get feedback from the audience how this can be done. I would just like to add a very small point. One is uh, the important issue we should be this properly, whether we should allow the fertile land to set up the solar power plants. Because uh, one megawatt requires almost uh, three to four acre of land. If it is fertile, then we uh, should be allowed to convert that land, positing the plant. One point. Second is, if you uh, can set up the plant in place like Ladakh, where you cannot uh, grow the vegetables or the grain and the crops, if you set up the plant there, now Government of India has announced the policy uh, as per which you can transmit the power from Ladakh to any state of the country without paying open excess charges. There is no winning charges, no open, open excess charges if it is uh, RE plant. So that is the best benefit. And of course, this is a very good suggestion that in place like Ladakh, even the Punjab and Haryana should invest instead of their power plant to meet out their options. Thank you. Uh, I will, the next question I would like to ask is, financial stability still remains the most important factor in solar. The prices are falling today and probably you are seeing prices below 3 rupees per unit. As a developer, as a EPC contractor, as an equipment supplier, you see many people are going bust. The big players are exiting from the market. If you see, Sun Edison is no longer there. So I would like to have your views on what should be the initiatives of the government to see that the developers, the EPC contractors, the investors, their money is safe. The government is working on what are the policies that will come forward specifically to secure these FDIs and the funds coming into this country with these kind of tariffs to stay. It should not go below 3 for sure. So eventually there will be a balancing act somewhere between 3.5 to 4 and that itself is a good uh, you know, tariff depending on the economy, depending on the future growth of this power sector. It's, it's I would say on the positive side. 40 megawatt rooftop is where the challenge is. Uh, this 60 uh, gigawatt is not a big deal for me because I think that the road, the, the ball has started rolling. 40 gigawatt is why the government has to really come up with the thrust, which I just said earlier. The net metering concept, the, we talk of the German concept, we talk of all of other examples which we quote. But we need to open up, we need to have a more adverse policies to push that every home should have their own generation on the rooftop, on their own top. Every home should have their own, you know, panels generating their own power. For that, we need to open up. The one megawatt of net metering concept has to go. We have to open and make it make a bigger uh, role, you know, play. This is a very good concept which you just said. You know, leasing out the sectors, the cities, and let the players come and get to the rooftop. A phenomenal, huge scope of business opportunity. So I don't see this as a challenge that the tariffs. I don't think it will come down below. People who have failed in this business, which you just mentioned, I think they were themselves responsible for that. It, I would not put it the government to be blamed. Their own policies, their own calculations went wrong. Those who exited from this business, 
those existed because of this tariff, I think somewhere they did their calculations wrong. It's nothing to do with the government or anybody. As far as government is concerned, I'll put it them if they can, you know, give their input on what is the policy they're coming out with. See, if the prices are falling, I don't think that it's an unmitigated disaster. Ultimately, consumer is king and it has to become, power has to become affordable. The Honorable Prime Minister wants every household to be uh, connected. So prices have to be, uh, you know, competitive. I think that um, for Punjab, I would bet my money on renewable energy, especially solar, if it comes to 3 rupees or below that. Because then Punjab can be a low cost producer of electricity. When I get coal from Jharkhand or Chhattisgarh, the price of transportation of coal is two times the cost of the coal itself. So if somebody was to install a power plant at the pit head and actually just move the power on transmission line, he could be supplying it at a price at which Punjab can never generate, never compete. So if solar power becomes cheaper and if it is uh, available in the state itself, distribution costs are almost zero, losses are almost zero, I think that may be the way forward. I think as far as, uh, you know, some companies losing money is concerned, as Mr. Hante Singh has pointed out quite clearly, it's a prudent business. You have to manage your own costs. And I think that when there are large, you know, uh, PPAs for 25 years, those have to be honored. So whichever prices have been contracted, if they are paid for, I think those companies will, wait, will, will end up making money. So I think that I see an optimism in this sector. I think it will grow. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I think we should uh, give the opportunity to the audience also to put in their questions. I would please request you to make a specific question. We don't want general statements. A specific question, you can address it to the gentleman whom you want to address. If you don't want to address it to the panelists, it is fine. Uh, first gentleman, yeah, there. In the Solar business from Enercom. Sir, whatever you have said, that is very good from regulatory commission point of view or from government perspective. But these rates have killed the state of small investors. I am ready to invest for one megawatt, but at this rate I can't. It should be, it should come out from the preview of section 63. Otherwise, uh, you can go for uh, competitor bidding only for the plants which are more than 50 megawatt. Viability of plants less than 50 megawatt isn't possible at all. Okay, I think all the, all the allotment shouldn't be under section 63. You know, um, Punjab government is seriously considering um, uh, farmers, you know, to put up their own uh, solar rooftops and to manage uh, uh, power uh, in a very, uh, you know, uh, desegregated way throughout the 12,000 well, that, that is a proposal. But how uh, can a farmer install uh, five, uh, can spend five crore for one megawatt? So, what we want to do, is he, is, uh, he won't be ready to get three uh, rupees per unit uh, against a uh, huge investor. No no. no, 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 what, what, the model that we have in mind and this is still under consideration, so it's quite open to suggestions, we, you could write to us also, I will give you my email ID. The model which we are considering is that maybe there's a large aggregator, maybe like EESL, you know, they might like to raise loans, they may like to do the installation and the farmer gets the benefit. So, if smaller companies want to join up with, you know, larger uh, public sector companies or even with private companies, I think that may be the way for even at this Sir, uh, sir, the question to not at this uh, rate, sir, sir, company is excuse me, excuse me. Sir, I, I'll, I'll just, sir, we don't want any cost talk. Would you please sir, request Shankar, you make a specific question? Uh, Shankarji, Shankarji, I'll just add on. When we talk of rooftop, we don't talk of 3 rupees tariff. Let me be clear. You know, with rooftop, the whole tariff concept is different. So no, that's number one. Let me let me complete. Uh, we are also pursuing the government, specifically Punjab and other state governments are also coming up because Punjab came out with the farmer scheme, which did take shape. A lot of people lost money. 
But yes, now they are trying to revive it, where we are also pursuing with the government. Things are going to change, but when you talk of rooftop, the tariffs are going to be a different concept altogether. Thank you. Yeah, well, my name is Rakesh Shaman. Uh, my company is uh, ST Energy Solutions, it's based in Noida. In fact, we have been talking about the tariff 3 rupees and all. But look, I just want to know one thing. Is this rupees 3, what we are talking about, the tariff, is it to the consumer or it is the bus bar? Because there is a quite a confusion now. The 3 rupees tariff, the 0.25 tariff and all other things. This, what I have understood is at the, at the bus bar. And then we have to add up the transportation costs, the transmission costs, and all of the losses and other things. So ultimately, for the consumer, it will not cost 3 rupees. It will cost much more than that. That's number one. Number two, what Mr. Bates has told, he has uh, uh, touched upon the development of the solar plants and other things in the Punjab during the recent past and all other things. But uh, because uh, he, at the same time, he told that uh, Punjab is short of the coal. So they have to import the coal uh, from uh, maybe Chhattisgarh, maybe Bihar, Chariya and all other places, no? And that too the coal is coming with 30 and 40 percent of the ash content in that, no? The task for actual coal content is much lesser than what uh, is at the, uh, uh, you know, the pit head, no? So the two options are there, either develop a pit head power station and transmit the power to, the, uh, to that state. Or even potential, and then at the same time, Punjab is short of the land. What so, this point has been addressed. They have already no, been no, no, addressed. No, no, it's my addition, could, sir. Could you uh, please make a question? We don't want a general statement. Uh, no, 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 no. Look, time is short, sir. Because he has not touched upon the subsidy. The subsidy in the Punjab should be more aggressive. Uh, at the same time, so that more and more people should go for the rooftop in the uh, urban area. Okay. Village area is one thing. That's number one. Number two, Ladakh and other places are very close to Punjab. So Ladakh में जो land है, land के वैल्यूटी जो है, उसमें वो promote करें independence को हम लोग के जैसे लोगों को एक मेगावाट, दो मेगावाट, दस मेगावाट के लिए, और वो power generate करके हम आपको देंगे। वो तो है सर। You are taking both the things. Both the things. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think your points have already been addressed. Probably are complete. So give the give it to the next gentleman. My name is Nitesh. I'm from Godrej and Boys. First of all, I would like to congratulate Mr. Shukla for joining Kareda. We have seen your wonderful work in Kareda. I would like to ask one question, what are your action plans to implement this mandate solar obligation on the top? Action plans, if the people, uh, what are the deadlines to implement this? For Haryana, you are asking? Yes. Uh, of course, we already uh, prepared the action plan that uh, for the year 17, 18 and uh, next three years, what actually this uh, government will do. And definitely we will see that we will meet out our RPU because now people, this uh, discoms, they will get the benefit means they can offset uh, their RPO obligation through the rooftop systems also. And as uh, you can see that we are coming up in very big way on uh, for setting up this uh, rooftop power plants. Dear friends, uh, we were talking about the mega size power plants. One thing I would just like to clear once again that it is all market driven business. Those who can, who can survive in the 1 megawatt plant, they will survive. If you cannot compete with the 100 megawatt, then you should not become generator of power. We should not think of uh, becoming generator. Means if a foreman will also become generator, if a rooftop owner will also become generator, then what will happen with the grid? There is, there are three things we should just always keep in our mind. One thing, the first is the forecasting, second is the scheduling, and third is the balancing. And government uh, do that forecasting and balancing in 96 blocks for every 15 seconds, 15 minutes, they do this forecasting and scheduling, which is not possible if you synchronize that 100 gigawatt of solar and wind with that grid. So we should stop generating power or we should stop thinking generation of power in 1 megawatt or 2 megawatt. Wherever it is of 100 uh, megawatt and above, technically, technically that is only feasible uh, for this nation. Our consumers are scattered right from the Jammu Kashmir to Kerala. There, there are NNDC and then regional uh, 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 RNDC and then SNDC. So these three bodies 
they are now managing distribution of power. So please stop thinking of generating 1 megawatt or 2 megawatt in different dispatcher times. Thank Thank you. you. Sir, my name is Bramesh, I'm from Talikwats. Uh, my question is to Bain sir uh, and Sir Shukha sir. Uh, I want to specific, uh, be specific about the net metering system. When it be really applicable for the consumer? Because we haven't seen the consumers actually getting a net metered bill. It is still the conventional bill which is coming. Secondly, why do not any new connection get a bi-directional meter to install itself? So that will give an additional promotion to the customer to install a solar power plant at its rooftop. That is all. Uh, see, as far as Haryana is concerned, you might be aware that the system has already been started. Now you can register online for getting the net meter. And uh, bi-directional meters are available even in, the, in the market also. There are four companies, those, those who are registered, and their rates are also approved by the distribution company, Ariana distribution company. So they are providing this uh, bi-directional meter from their stores or you can buy directly from the market also. It means for the developer it is available and the system is also very easy. From uh, March onward and precisely from 1st April onward people have started getting the bill with net meter arrangements.